Right, so materials. Now, I'm going to give a basic rundown on the materials that I use while I'm working on a kit. These, by all means, aren't the be-all, end-all materials. These are just what I use and what I feel comfortable using when I'm working on a Boba Fett helmet kit. Um, I'll start off at the materials that you're going to be using first and what you're really going to need. Going on to uh, you know, the minor stuff, but also still important stuff. Um, first thing though, safety. Really, you, you need a nice place to work on these kits. Um, either a well ventilated area, a workspace, outside even. Um, and also you need a respirator and dust mask. You know, you're messing with dangerous chemicals here and dusts and you really don't want that stuff going on your lungs. So make sure you, you know, you're being safe doing this stuff. Okay, so you've bought yourself a nice lovely Boba Fett helmet. You need to start cutting all the bits out on it. How are you going to do that? Well, the best bet, nice little rotary tool. This one here, I picked up a couple of years ago uh, from B&Q. I think it was B&Q. Um, it's a Dremel. Uh, pretty much the only make everyone uses. You can buy little attachments, like a little pencil tool. But the idea of these is that you can attach um, like a sanding wheel, a cutting wheel, a little uh, uh, detailing wheel. Really, they, they make easy, easy work of these little kits. Um, yeah, well, well worth the money. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, once you've gone ahead and cut all the stuff out, you need to sand it smooth. So various sandpaper is going to be needed, anything from uh, anything from uh, 60 grit, I believe I start from, all the way up to uh, 600. Maybe a bit of an overkill, but I like mine to be smooth. As soon as I pass the 180 mark, I go to the wet and dry. This basically involves you uh, sand, sanding with some water. A little tip that I picked up, uh, picked up from a friend who works uh, in an auto body shop is to mix a little bit of um, washing up liquid. It helps lather up the, uh, the sandpaper. You'll see that later on in the video when I'm working on the helmet. But really a nice little tip there. As well as sandpaper, I guess some wire wool. You don't really need this for the prep work. This is mainly for the paint work um, in, in between each layer. I'll show you how to use this later on, but this stuff is, is really good. Um, as well as sandpaper, you're going to get yourself some little, uh, little needle files. Now, these things are worth their weight in gold. Again, they're the little nicks and crannies. You don't really need it so much on a Boba Fett helmet. Um, if you do need to cut the key slots out, you will need something of this sort of, uh, of size to get in there. But mainly you just use it to uh, neaten up the holes you've made in the visor area. Uh, that's pretty much it for them. Um, hardware, just just basic nuts and bolt like bolts I use. These are the uh, bolt on the ears, um, any size really. Uh, I believe these are. Doesn't say the size. M four point twenty five. I don't know what that is. Um, we'll get into that a bit later on. I'll be using. I'll, I'll probably measure them up for you. Um, if you've built uh, stormtrooper armor, you would have heard this term a lot. Well pretty much any trade. Um, measure twice, cut once, tape measure. Seriously, you don't want to be drilling holes into your Boba Fett helmet, you know, to find out that it's in the wrong place. You know, make sure you, you know, you're on the money first time. Um, as well as the sandpaper, when you cut out the helmet you occasionally encounter um, air bubbles in, in the cast. I don't know if there's any on this helmet. I've started to neaten it up a little bit. Um, Trust this to be a really nice cast. No, but usually when you cut out the visor area, you'll occasionally get some air bubbles or little holes in here uh, to fix them up. And I can get yourself some automotive grade filler if you're in the States, Bondo. Now, this is the nasty stuff. Make sure you're doing this outside, and when you're sanding it, make sure you use a dust mask or a respirator. This stuff you do not want on your lungs. Um, masking tape when you paint them. Uh, standard uh, two inch tape, uh, mix this with a, a plastic bag, you know, to save on tape, you're sorted. Also some nice detail tape, uh, this is about one centimeter wide. Uh, this stuff is great uh, for going on the arches of the helmet and stuff, because the helmet's got a lot of curves in it, and a lot of detail work, so you, you want to get some nice, some nice little detail tape, and some nice little wheel as well, so just pull it off, peel it off. Even though we're bolting on some of the bits of the helmet, you're going to also need some super glue, uh, whether to glue the rangefinder on, uh, which will be on the white helmet, um, on the grey helmet, 
Um, we're going to have to glue on one of the ear cap pieces, which I'll show you later on. I use this um, two part glue. It's actually the. Um, I use it when I fit uh, fit floors. Uh, a mitre. Mitre Pro. Really, really, really strong stuff, but any super glue will do. Um, brushes. Even though we're going to get into airbrush and show you about airbrush, you really do need brushes. These are mainly just for. Um, for the weathering at the end of the job and also for the fine detail bits where the airbrush just can't get. I'm going to paint in a little bit of extra details. Get a set of these. Running a bit, a bit into this video now. Um, while you're painting, some masking fluid. Now this stuff, I don't know if you're a kid, but you put a bit of PVA glue on your hand and when it dry you peel it off. This is what this stuff is but it's for paints. You put it on where you don't want paint to go. Once the paint's dry, you peel it off and you've got an area underneath with no paint on. Due to it being so sticky, you need to get yourself a special little brush. This is a basic um, colour shaper. It's a, it's a rubber chisel brush. Uh, it really does help in applying this this stuff. Um, and it doesn't congeal the end of it because it's rubber. Simples. Some of the bits that I haven't got on the got on show, so I need to go and get some, some more bits. You're going to need some wax paper or um, Graphite paper, uh, oops, pardon me, graphite paper. Um, this is like reverse tracing paper. Um, when I do get some, I'll show you how to use it. This is what we used to put on the stencils. Um, you also need a pencil, but you know, everyone has a pencil. Um, and an airbrush. Now, before I start to get into this, I didn't want to airbrush because I realised how expensive they can be. But I picked up this one. This is a this is a quite an old one now for me. Uh, this one costs fifteen pounds. It runs off little compressed air cans. I'll be using this one for the sole purpose of this video, just to show that it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to do an airbrush paint job. Um, I do have a double action, which I now use for my commission work for the professional helmets. But you can get just as good results with one of these um, than one of the more expensive, you know, one hundred and fifty pound airbrushes with the compressors. Just a little less more control and a little think. Last but not least, paints. I use hand roll, I know the colour as well. I've got all the colour lists, just simple little parts you'll find in a hobby shop. Um, I'll go through a colour list, some more colours to use and thinners and such. And I have to put them in. That's pretty much that's pretty much it. I don't know if I'm missing anything. Oh you're gonna need some primer. Trust me to miss this. Um, I usually give about three coats. Uh, give the first coat after the first pass over. Um, this shows up any imperfection, any holes, any bubbles, you can fill that in. Uh, give it another spray, sand it over, and then one more final coat in when you're ready to paint on. Make sure you give it a little uh, buff up with some wire wall or something, just to give the other paint something to bite into. But we'll get into that in the next video. Um, next video now, we'll be washing the helmet. I'll show you how to mark it all up, and we'll get cutting these visors out. So, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.